What's up guys? Um, I haven't uploaded anything in about three months and uh, I feel I'm ready to tell you guys why. I went through something really traumatic recently and because of that, um, I haven't really been in the right headspace to uh, make content. Uh, but I'm back now and I feel I'm ready to tell you guys what happened. Uh, I fumbled a baddie. You what? All right, so the real reason I haven't uploaded is simply because I got busy. I've been working on yet another big project that I plan to upload within the next month or so. Here's a clip. R. kelly by a man, but not just any man. A white man. I beg your pardon. Anyway, uh, yeah, you guys heard me right. I fumbled a baddie. I ain't been able to stop thinking about it since it happened not even three days ago. And yeah, yeah, I already know what some of you were thinking. Bro, what's the big deal? There are plenty of bad bad out there, dude. Shut the fuck up, you crybaby ass, bitch ass, pussy ass, no hoes getting ass, ashy ass, po ass, broke ass, ugly ass, hoe ass. Listen, some of y'all might not be able to understand, but the ones that get it, they know full well what kind of pain and agony I'm going through right now. I'ma tell y'all this right now. No boy, no Nathan. Nathan. Fumbling a bad bitch is the worst mental anguish that a man could go through in his entire life. Well, what about homeless men? If you went out and asked 20 homeless men right now if they would rather be homeless for the rest of their life but they have maximum ribs and can pull any chick they wanted or live in a nice house with a nice job never having to want for anything again but they fumbled every bad bitch they came in contact with i guarantee you they would pick the first option but what about war veterans with ptsd not trying to hear it oh you served in the vietnam war okay but have you ever fumbled a baddie though I don't think so. Fumbling a baddie will give you your own form of PTSD. You could dead ass be chilling on a beautiful day, listening to some banging ass music, relaxing, life is good. And all of a sudden you get flooded with the flashbacks of the day you fumbled a bad day and your entire mental state is ruined for the rest of the day. Be walking down the street and remember the baddie you fumbled and straight crumpled to the ground. Now, if you know me for a minute, you know that I am a habitual bag fumbler. I fumbled my fair share of bags in my life. I may even held the title of professional bag fumbler at one point but after this i've been promoted to the ceo of bag fumbling because what happened on a fateful saturday night was possibly the biggest bag fumble of my life All right, so boom, let me tell y'all what happened. So it's Saturday. My job finally gave me a Saturday off after like three years. So of course I'm gonna spend this day wise. My brother from another mother, Skinny Black, that's what I call him, it's an inside joke, you wouldn't get it. My boy Skinny Black posts on his exclusive Snapchat story that only the big ballers get in, that there's a party going down tonight. Me, being the party animal I am, you already know I'm about to make my way down and enjoy myself on this fine Saturday. I get the fit ready, style the hair to make sure it's just perfect, slap the cologne on to make sure I'm smelling good just in case your auntie shows up at the party, pack up the overnight bag and I'm out the door. Now, I don't go to parties with the sole intention of pulling chicks. Honestly, the only reason I go to parties now is because the homie's there. If I didn't know anybody there, I wouldn't go. But I always got to make sure I'm ready in case the hoes show up. Because it's as they say, proper preparation prevents poor performance. In the words of Sugar Free, if you stay ready, you ain't got to get ready. So trust me, I was ready. But he was not ready. In fact, this was the most unready he had been in his entire life. Anyway, I pull up to my boy's college dorm. We dap each other up and we just chilling before the festivities begin. Laughing, joking, talking about how fucked up he got at the last party, all that jazz. So we finally start making our way to the party and we get there early. Personally, I like getting to parties early as possible because there aren't a lot of people there and you can pour yourself some nice JJ before everybody starts gangbanging the cooler and sucks up all the damn jungle juice. So fast forward like 45 minutes or something into the function, the JJ runs out. <laughs> obviously so we make the trek into the kitchen and make some more now while we're in there another homie walks in with some of that jazz cabbage in his hand now me i don't do a whole lot of smoking i don't smoke by myself ever and you can really only catch me puffing stuff when i'm around friends that i trust so when he walks in with a doink he offers me to take a hit i think to myself why the hell not i'm having fun one hit won't hurt one hit hurt it, it hurt a lot. So against my better judgment, I take a hit of the booth. Big f mistake. I made the fatal mistake of puffing the booth a little too long and now I'm in the middle of the function like... and it hits me immediately. Eyes get heavy instantly and everything around me suddenly becomes 10 times funnier. Now, here's the part where the baddie comes into play. I'm not really sure the chronological order of things, so I don't know if I if I hit the blunt after the baddie walked in or before. All I know is I was high off my ass when she was at the party. Here's how my interaction with the girl started. I was outside conversing with the locals and I saw a group of like four or five girls walking up to the house. Every single one of them was wearing all black 
except for one. When they made it on the porch, I kid you not, this was bar none, top three baddest light-skinned women I've ever seen in my life. She had long, curly black hair, done up in a little ponytail, with a bang running past her face, a slender yet athletic build, rocking some leggings that I'm confident every girl in the world owns a pair of. You know which leggings I'm talking about. The ones with the little V shape at the waist, hugs the legs a little bit to show off the assets. You know, give the booty an extra pop. You know what I'm saying. And she had on this fluffy white sweater that she pinned up in a weird sort of way to show off her stomach a bit. Mm. Hold on, y'all, I need a moment. I'm getting worked up. Now, upon initial contact, we looked at each other once, looked away. Then I saw out of the corner of my eye that she had gone back to looking at me. This chick just did a double take at me. No woman in the history of my entire life has ever done a double take at me. I don't even think my ex did that. So I look at her again, and then we both looked away, and she went into the house to join the party. At that moment, I had a suspicion that she was liking what she saw, but I wasn't gonna act on a look alone. It was probably a fluke, honestly. Just then. As if something was trying to give me a sign, someone opened up the door, and she was in the middle of the den. For. And as soon as that door was open, we locked eyes for like a solid three and a she half a seconds. Now I was starting to think she definitely liked what she saw and now I had to make a plan to secure this bag that God for some reason just handed to me. You know what? Now that I think about it, I hit the blunt after she showed up because I went back in the house right after that and that's when we ran out of JJ. So fast forward past me almost dying in the kitchen. They finished making a JJ. I'm making my way out of the kitchen and her and her friends are standing in the hallway that connects the bar and the living room. I go to squeeze past her and as I'm doing so, I go to sneak in one more glance at her and she's looking looking me dead in my eyes. She holds her cup up to me and, and my dumb ass waves at her. I didn't have a cup in my hand, so I couldn't really toast her back anyway. Now my homie Skinny Black sees this and as I get over to him, he says, go ahead and get you some. And that was all the confirmation I needed. This chick was indeed trying to have me knock the stuffing out of that egg muffin. So here I am trying to devise a plan to secure this bag. But remember, I'm high. High off my ass to be exact. So I start asking some of the homies how to approach her. And I'm using all of this advice that I get to develop a course of action. As I'm doing this, I see her and one of her friends walk out of the door. So I ask some more homies for some advice and then I go outside. Halfway to talk to the homies that were outside. Halfway to see if the baddie had left yet. As I get out there, she's saying something to her friend. But as she sees me, she kind of recoils. You know, like the kind of recoil you do when you're saying something about somebody. And then you see them as you're saying it. I go to sit on the porch while she's sitting on the steps. It's time for me to make my move. I asked one more homie for some advice on approaching her. Not because I needed it now, but because I was hoping that we were speaking loud enough so that she would hear us and woo up the bam, I secured the bag. But it ain't happening like that. As I'm doing this, her other friends walk outside and I hear her say, are you ready to go? I gotta act fast. So I hit her with the, excuse me, excuse me, right as she's walking off the porch. And she stops and turns to me. Now keep in mind that I am fried out of my brain right now. So as she turns to me, I quickly realize that I did not playing a single fucking thing and I was just freestyling at this point. So I looked at her with my high ass eyes and say, are you a celebrity? Um, no, I'm not a celebrity. Well, you look like one. Oh really? What celebrity? Um, uh, the one on my shirt. I was wearing this sweatshirt, by the way, and I pointed at Rachel True from The Craft, a celebrity who she looks nothing like. Now, I had an extra step involved in this plan. I was playing chess, to be honest. See, the plan was, when I pointed at this celebrity, who she clearly looks nothing like, she questioned it, and then I'd be all like, I'm sorry, that was a bit awkward. I guess that was just my way of saying, I find you very attractive. After that point, I had no idea how that would go, but it was something, damn it. But because I chose to talk to her right as they were all about to leave, her friends were urging her to come the hell on and stop talking to this strange-ass nigga at the party so she says um no i'm not a celebrity but thank you have a good night and just like that i fumbled the bag because i was high i was gonna rise up a light skin but i was high Ooh. she looked at me and i thought i was in but i was high La -da -da. now i ain't got no hoes and i know why yeah because i got high because i got high because i got high at first, it didn't even hit me like that. Probably because I was still high. I just thought to myself, eh, you win some, you lose some. The party continued on as normal. Went back to my homie's dorm and passed my high ass out on the floor. Woke up the next day, thought to myself, you know, that probably would've went better if I wasn't high. Oh well, hung out with my homie for a little bit longer. We parted ways, I drove home, and I didn't even think about it that much. Then, I got home, walked into my room, and then it hit me. Yeah, yeah. I can't believe I fumbled a baddie like that. Are you a celebrity? What was I thinking? I'm never gonna see a girl. 
something bad again in my life. I'm doomed to live the rest of my life with no hoes. Now, like I said, I fumbled bags before, but this was just on a whole nother level. Never in my life have I received so many overt signals from a girl that she wanted me to tap dance in them panties. Never in my life has a girl sent me so many signals that she wanted me to knock the dust off that pussy. Never in my 21 years of living has a girl ever displayed so many signs that she wanted to do a little something, something. Man, I'm never smoking at a party again, bro. I swear.